you like listening to podcasts? Of course you do. You're listening to a podcast right now. What about getting paid to listen to podcasts? Well, now you can. Sign up at podcoin.com and get paid to listen to your favorite podcasts. It's free. Get paid to listen, save up your pod coins, cash them in for prizes like Amazon or Starbucks gift cards. Or you can donate to charity like we do. Use our offer code SUPERPOD to get 300 pod coins on us. It's available in the App Store and on Android. It's the only way that we listen to podcasts now, and it could change the way that you listen to podcasts. Now on with the show. This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Oh, hey everybody, it's me, Cool Cat. Yay! <laughs> and you're listening to the Super Media Brothers Podcast with me, Cool Cat. Yay! And guess what? The cat is out of the bag. And you know what? There's not going to be any bullying here. <laughs> What's up, man? How's it going? It, it's going. Um, that 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 was that was a really nice little uh, little introduction there. Not sure where that came from, but I'm I'm happy that it, it happened. I know it just felt like he just came out of the sky. The podcast heaven was like, oh, hey, yeah, hey, I must do this. I must do this thing. I must do it. I must do it now. Could you imagine that voice as Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> Oh, get to the chopper! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's the predator! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Give me your clothes, your shoes, and your motorcycle. <laughs> he, he doesn't even need the motorcycle or the shoes. <laughs> he just takes them because he can. Yep. Ah, uh, hi! Welcome to a special edition of the Super Media Bros podcast. I'm Midnight Agent Raw, and I'm Okami. Um, look, just gonna get down to it here. Okay, we know why you're here. You know why you're here, and you know who we're talking about. Indeed. Um, just to throw out kind of a disclaimer here before we even roll into everything. Uh, just right off the bat, sometimes out there in internet land, there are content creators or people, which there are people too, but you know. There could be bots. Exactly. They could be bots, but they're not. Not bots. <laughs> Thought bot. Yes, Exactly. There are people out there, content creators, that sometimes criticize the work of others. Sometimes the subject of said criticisms can't take the heat. You know, so they just decide to make false claims of copyright infringement against the fair use works of those content creators, and that's where things get really messy. Stop it. And to be honest, (laughs) we're tired of it, and we're here to tell the truth. Yeah. We have been... I mean, we've been working with our legal team to ensure relinquishment and liability of all involved parties. Yeah. So, you know, going through and going forward, names, locations have been altered or just changed, but just understand that the story is the same. It's it's true. And nobody's being attacked. Nobody's being lied about. None of this is being done maliciously or harmful of any sort of manner we are simply bringing you the facts backed up by first-hand experiences of our guest today jason johnson star of cool cat films yep again you know why you're here and we know why you're here and we want you to buckle down for the ride yeah absolutely you know the interview itself is is more like a social commentary it's it's a very true story. We're not making this up. It's a true story. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, it's so ridiculous that it's also a parody. Like we're, we're not joking. No, we're not. Like it, the the absurdity of some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about is is I, I can't even fathom some of it. Honestly, we've been trying to understand and fathom a lot of stuff since day one of this in our lives. So you can imagine just how just chaotic it has gotten since. Yeah. Yep. 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 And, uh, you know, we're going to just be talking about a man that had an experience with a string of movies, a string of events that 
is just it's just wild. Every bit of it is 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 wild. And he experienced this under uh, the work of a man named Eric Garbage. Eric Garbage. We'll let that sink in for a minute. Let it sink in. Are you ready to take the garbage out, sir? I have been waiting for a while. All right, cool. So without any further ado, here is our interview with Jason Johnson. Always remember, there's a big difference between bullying and and stating the truth. And we're stating the truth here. I'm Midnight Agent Raw. And I'm Okami. And we're sitting here with Jason Johnson. How's it going, dude? It is going fantastic. How about you guys? It's just as fantastic over here. It's a magical day. Being sweaty in this heat, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Do, wait, magical wait. and ma- Being sweaty magical in, in the south. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> magical and sweaty. It's hot. <laughs> come down to the south. Yeah, yeah come on down yeah. where you can... Uh, <laughs> you could do like a water slide without there actually being anything like for friction. Like you just go. <laughs> you jump in the air and go into a water slide immediately. <laughs> you can sweat in the shower. Yeah. Dude, it's so counterproductive. It is. Like think yeah. about that. That is counterproductive at, at its finest. You, know? you are your self owned water company. <laughs> <laughs> like who, who who needs faucet water? Who needs bath water? You just create it right there. Exactly. <laughs> All right, man. So before we get into everything we're going to get into, because there's a lot to unpack, um, we have to ask you, are you under any kind of non-disclosure agreement or are you under any kind of contract that's going to prevent you from talking about anything we're discussing today? No non-disclosure, no contract, nothing. Sounds good. So now we begin. All right, cool. So everybody that's listening knows why they're here. You know, you know why you're here. We know why we're all three of us are here. Right. So you spent the better part, and just from our guesstimation, because you know filming time kind of gets clunky, which we'll get into. Like you spent the better part of about five or six years being attached to this franchise, including like the Christmas parade, the stops bullying, save the kids, all that stuff. Now, um, how did you first become involved with all of it? Like, where did you and Eric Garbage first meet? I originally got in contact with Eric Garbage. Uh, I had submitted for the part online. For anybody that does not know this, most, pretty much every bit of acting submission is done online. Whether you have an agent or a manager, even they still submit your headshot and resume, links to your demo reels and stuff like that, all online. So I had submitted to the project online. This was uh, probably mid-March of 2012. Uh, I had gotten a call from Eric Garbage, and I was actually at an audition. And he had explained to me about the part, and he said, I got your info. I think you'd be good for it. And um, he asked me where I was at. And um, I was actually not too far from where we met. So we met up at a popular coffee shop in North Hollywood. And then that's when we, we started, uh, he started talking to me about the original project, which was Cool Can't Stops Bullying. That was the original project with uh, Vivica and Eric, and that was the only time they ever worked, one day on set. Oh, wow. One day. So... Yep. That's the way it comes about. It seems like there's so much more, and just I mean, we'll get into that later. Like as the as we roll through this timeline of, of junk, but dude, wow! <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, so, pretty crazy. Yeah, so he already yeah, had, and it, yeah, so yeah, he, he already it's had all this barely in, a ten hour day. Oh my god! So he already had all this in mind. I just don't understand how you can get like so much done in such a little amount of time, but. I don't know. Well, what happened was uh, he had got all of the main footage shot that one day, and plus, since he had the kids, you have to work quickly. Mm. He did two. He did two more days of uh, just with me alone. What's uh, called pickup shots for those for those of you that don't know, pickup shots are basically. When not uh, when you do reshoots, let's say that you forget to get a close up of an actor, 
or maybe uh, a, a reverse angle of a particular conversation, particular scene, just stuff like that. So um, all of those pickup days uh, that I did on that original shoot of Cool Cat Stops Bullying was just literally, I was the only actor there. And it was just close-ups of me um, in the outfit just saying the lines, and that was pretty much it. So, and, yeah, <clears throat> go ahead. Yeah. And what happened was when I originally met with Eric Garbage, he was looking for someone to just be in the suit. He had made it very clear up front that he was going to do the voice of the character. Mm -hmm. And he was just looking for somebody to be in the outfit and do the voice. And for me, I, I really wanted to have him keep my voice in there because the thing that made the part so attractive was he told me on the phone and at that meeting when I met him later that day that Vivica and Eric were going to be in it. And at that time period as an actor, I had never had a scene with uh, name actors like that. I had worked with name actors but never had scenes with them they were in other scenes and i just wasn't in there with them so just being able to get all that to flow for me as an actor at the time that was like wow it's like this would be this would be good it's like i i really want to do this so mm -hmm. yeah so that just uh got us off and rolling on that he didn't let me know i officially had the part for probably about another week or so um, he said that he was actually looking at somebody else. Actually, he said he was looking at a girl to actually originally be in there in the outfit. So I don't really know too much about that at all. So and who knows if he was BSing me or not. So I have no idea. Now, before y'all started doing anything when it comes to the films, did he get you to sign any kind of contract or any kind of agreement before the films arose? Nope, nothing like that. In fact, to uh, uh, just so, just so listeners know, uh, all of these uh, uh, these were done non-union, also too. So there was not even a, there was not even any contract uh, with the Screen Actors Guild or anything like that either. So, so basically, so, just a gentleman's handshake, if you want yeah. to call it that. <clears throat> basically literally yeah literally yeah and in, in fact too there was no even check stubs every uh payment was either cash or handwritten check so personal yeah extremely like Just under exactly. the table yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah you know. so all that meeting and everything that you just mentioned like We'll go into uh, 2012. So this, I would assume, we would assume, is the Hollywood parade and the stops bullying stuff. Because those first three films kind of happened around the same time. And we, you know, we've said before that a lot of the same footage gets used. Uh, so being on set for the first time with everything, like, how was that? Like, how was it being on set filming all that stuff for the very first time? Uh, it was kind of nerve-wracking a little bit at first because I would, my main concentration was trying to find the right voice as I'm like sitting there trying to, you know, work everything on set, like going over my lines just so he'd keep the voice. And then I had this kind of, uh, it was kind of a, a sticky situation in the sense of the original script has uh, had a lot of run-on sentences and just a lot of grammatical errors. So it was kind of so it was kind of nerve-wracking in that sense of just like what this is kind of strange. That's not surprising if if anybody has heard yeah. heard, heard Eric talk before. It's not surprising. Uh, right, uh, right. It's like right. How, it's like how and, do you take it professionally when you can't even read what you're looking at? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and, and yeah. So that was that was definitely kind of difficult. Uh, but once once he had told me, it was about halfway through the shoot day 
that first shoot day, he said that he was, he said he really liked the voice and he said he was probably going to keep it. And he told me a couple of times and I had, and uh, a couple other people had commented about how they liked it. So, but, so the last part of the day, I felt a lot more confident. I felt, you know, it was easier to get into and whatnot, but it was, I mean, it, it was still difficult. I mean, it was, it was a hot day. Uh, it was my first time in the outfit. That was my first time uh, rehearsing with the kids. That was the first time that everybody was together. Um, and also, too, I don't know if anyone knows this, but that was the very first time that Eric Burbage ever directed anything. I mean, he was completely green. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, it, you know, it was, it, was, it was kind of interesting. Um, compared to all the other shoes on all the other films, uh, strangely enough, the first shoot was actually probably the most professional because it had the biggest crew there. Mm-hmm. And, oh, and so he, he had actually, actually... So he actually had people me? there. Oh, so he actually had people there. Like more than yeah, just he him. Did, he did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He did. And actually, too, he had... Uh, he had in industry terms, an AD, which is short for an assistant director. Mm-hmm. And for and for people that don't know, it's usually the assistant director that really kind of runs uh, runs the set. The director really kind of sits back and watches the monitors mm-hmm. and just talks to the actor. In fact, you usually it's the assistant director that actually yells action and cut and all that a lot of times. Right. Depends on who the di- depends on who the director is, though. Of course. Sure. Um, so. Like I said, with that first shoot, there was actually a little bit of a larger crew, so it did have kind of a professional feel to it. Um, he made a very big deal about the only editor that he ever worked with, how he won an Emmy. Well, he actually had this editor uh, come down to the set and bring his Emmy, and he had the actors pose with this Emmy. So that's where that picture well, came from. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it all pieces together finally. <laughs> yeah. So, and I had, and, and I had never seen anything like that ever. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I mean, I have never heard of any filmmaker crew member that carries around their awards in their car. Dude. <laughs> Oh man! I mean, unless you lived in your car. I'm sorry. This is yeah. yeah this yeah. is a <laughs> this is a good laugh on that one. And I, oh, man. I, I clearly remember being. He 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 was in uh, one of the holding areas, and he was on the phone calling the editor. Oh, when done, make sure you bring the Emmy with you. <laughs> I can picture it too. <laughs> Just uh, just just make sure you bring that in me, all mm-hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Ugh. So he so he shows up, and, and and also too, I mean, for an editor, unless an editor is friends with the director, like really good friends, there's no reason for an editor to go visit the set. I mean, in reality, the editor's probably cutting another project he's working on, or she's working on. <laughs> Yeah. As long as we're so, in agreement about that, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so it's just that was that was very strange, and it was my first day on set and seeing this. I'm like, what is going on? So what is happening nowadays? I mean, so <laughs> yeah, 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 so far there's been <laughs> a lot of image, strange. Bring an image to set. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Do you get chastised for not bringing your Emmy on set? You know what? Yeah, no kidding. You know what? What <laughs> if that was... Didn't... Well, I brought my Oscar. I brought my Golden Globe. That's not what I asked. I asked for an Emmy. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> get it right. Get it right. You are you are no professional. You don't have an Emmy award. Get off my set. <laughs> yeah. That's like the well, industry standard. Four... Well, I brought my 420 award. Oh, that's okay. That counts. That counts. That... Just go ahead and put it what there. Next even... to What do I even pay you guys for? You didn't pay us at all. That's not the point. That's not the point. I gave you a complimentary yeah. t-shirt and ticket and trophy. Take it with you. Well, <laughs> yep. Golly. Oh. But, and uh, the, uh, that backyard that uh, all of that's in, that was not that house that I, uh, that, um, 
that that guy, uh, Starwell, had owned. That was actually owned by another gentleman. I do not remember his name, but he was actually Hulk Hogan's uh, body double. What? So there was this guy that owned this house who was walking around who looked like Hulk Hogan, but it wasn't. So I'm talking like, you know, six, five, kind of bald in that same area, that kind of stringy, blonde hair, the goatee, the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, brother. But it, was, but it wasn't it Hulk Hogan. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Jeez, so that dude. Was a, that was a trip. Yeah. Did this all happen around the same time that, like, the Hollywood parade stuff was was being done? Like, how did you guys get into uh, that? No. Uh, well, the Hollywood parade, uh, that did not happen until November of 2012. Okay. So all this was just kind of shot, like, within the same year, but not on the same like, yes. day. Okay. Exactly. And the exactly. releases are so weird. So that's what make that's what doesn't make sense. Because like you sit there and you look at all this stuff, and it's like, okay, Hollywood Parade was like the first thing anybody ever really like looked at or that's listed. And then turns out it's it's like a really messed up Tarantino film where everything's out of order. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Well, and also too, and then you also have to remember that none of this was intended to be uh, put together all as one film. This was you know, shot as a short, and then all of a sudden, you know, a couple years later, he got the broad idea of just like, oh, I'm just going to piece this together. Why not make a movie? You know, why not make a feature? You know, so the being the fact that he asked his editor to be on set, that's probably why I got put out of order, because the editor had no time to put it in order. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, actually, what happened was uh, that editor only worked on... Uh, Cool Cat stops bullying. Mm, once we okay. got once we got to the other projects, the the money was less, and then also at the same time too, because Mister Garbage likes to have his hands in as many pies as possible. He realized that oh, you know, the editing end—that's another end that I could cover. So I'm going to start doing that also. Oh, I'm cutting no. costs where I can. He's cutting costs and no, cutting no, literally, films. Literally, literally, yeah. literally. In fact, you speaking of uh, cutting costs, um, I remember when we were getting ready to do the um, Cool Cat in the Hollywood Christmas Parade 2012. Um, this was probably yeah, this is probably October. Maybe he was talking about this. Maybe even early November. He was talking about this other film he wanted to do. One of the many other cool uh, one films that didn't take off um this one was you know the wicked witch one i heard about this and (laughs) yeah and he was literally asking me how how i thought he could somehow sneak in an actor in the crowd in a witch outfit and somehow simultaneously film the two projects and i told him i said eric i was like that's that cannot be done. That's impossible. It's like, how are you going to do that? And then he was like, yeah, I guess you're probably right. It's probably not going to work. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah. So you have, so when you talk about cutting costs, that's a polite euphemism. Oh, golly. So being that he's that frivolous as, you know, being yeah. money pinching, yeah. basically, did you have to buy tickets to get in for the VIP part of the parade when it was filming? He bought, he bought the tickets. He had to pay to get all of to get us in there and to get the car in there and all that. I I want to say it was a couple of thousand. Like each or all together? All uh, aggregated together, all together. Oh, mm. my God. Yeah, and... And oh, I did man. not understand at the time that, oh, well, you know, he just basically, you know, had paid for us to get in. When it was originally pitched to me, I did not know that. So he tried to pitch it like y'all were invited to it. Mm-hmm. Like 100% was exactly. on them. Oh, exactly. man. Yeah, and I figured that exactly. was yeah, that I figured I figured Eric Garbage would do some kind of like, you know, well, we're just going to tell a little white lie. and That's why he has oh, yeah. his hands oh, in yeah. so many pies. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. And, um, 
Dude, those celebrities I mean, look so uncomfortable. <laughs> I had oh, to oh, say oh, that. Oh, they're very uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, and, and that was the other thing, too, is I kept asking. I was just like, nobody knows who this character is. He's like, oh, we'll just, you know, blend in. And, <laughs> You're in a big orange cat suit. How do you blend in? Yeah, exactly. You're in Hollywood. Apparently, exactly. you do blend in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he had kind of pulled me off to the side and had me talk to some people. And... I will say it was fun because when I was in the outfit and doing the voice, talking to Joe Montana was great because because as the character, I'm sitting there ask I'm sitting here telling him about how I love the Fat Tony voice from The Simpsons and how I love every you know when Fat Tony's always in those episodes and so that was fun getting to do that and then when I and then when I was talking to George Takai, um, I was talking to him how I enjoyed the original catch films. Especially uh, uh, Wrath of Khan and Part Six, Undiscovered Country. So then, so that line does not make any sense at all when 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 he kept it in the new thing, um, you know, the crazy dream. When you hear George Takai say that movie should have been called Captain Sulu to the Rescue, he's referring to my comment about how much I enjoyed Star Trek VI, Undiscovered Country. And to anybody out there that remembers that film, his character, Sulu, like really stepped it up. In fact, there's a part in the film where he says he's the captain of the Enterprise. <laughs> yep. And like, so hence saying, like, you know, that movie should have been called Captain Sulu to the Rescue. So it was just fun just talking to him also, just, you know, as myself being a fan, but also putting those, putting that aspect into the character, playing the character talk. <laughs> Now, so. weird thing, like, you mentioned earlier how when you met with Eric and Vivica and it was kind of just like a a wow factor in a way, was it awkward? Oh, yeah. Was it awkward to talk with any celebrities that you came across either as your character or as yourself in any situation that you were in, basically? Uh, it was kind of weird because I wanted to talk to Lou Ferrigno. Uh, I can't ever pronounce his last name, so forgive me. Uh, the original Incredible Hulk. Lou Ferrigno. Mm -hmm. Ferrigno, yep. Lou Ferrigno. I was excited about talking to him, and Mr. Garbage, you know, said some unkind words about him. Oh, and so wow. he and and so and so he pulled me away. So I was just like, you know, what the heck? It's like I. You know, I grew up watching that show. Yeah. Like, I, I would like to talk to that man. You, you ruined it. You know, it's like <laughs> ruined. Yeah, yeah. It's like even though that's all he's known for, it's like I don't care. It's like it's still what I would like to talk to him. <sighs> you know, he was good at what he did back then. Frigno's the man. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of hope um, Hulk smashed him for a second. Oh my oh, god! Oh yeah, <laughs> just was, turns green was, right there. <laughs> there, there the, the weird, awkward one was when uh, he talked, when uh, I talked to uh, the then L.A. mayor, Garcetti, because mm -hmm. I didn't know who he was. Oh, I, yeah, I can just about imagine how that would go. It's like, how do you, yeah. you know, because like, we, we hit it off pretty good. Like, the three of us, like, obviously hit it off pretty well. But, like, how do you just, you know go in person to somebody like that and it, you're in a suit first of all and oh yeah how do you yeah. make this work you know what i mean and like did, oh, they, yeah. did they react in a like weird manner when you would talk in the voice and stuff like that because like that just i wouldn't know what to do with myself like if i knew it was like a mascot that i knew of or anything like that i'd be like okay cool i get it but then you got to think they're sitting there like who the hell is this thing what is this? What is this? Like, you know? It's like you start questioning everybody who came to the party. Is like who who hired this mascot? <laughs> yeah, they uh, blame it on Montel. They, <laughs> yeah, they didn't really seem to be too off put, but at the same time, it was just kind of like okay, you know, thanks. <laughs> and then of course with Mister Garbage there with the camera trying to direct, so. It, it, I mean, it was a little awkward, but it was done so fast that before there was time for it to get really awkward, it was we were already kind of out of there moving on to the next person, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, because, I mean, especially, like, uh, especially some of them, like uh, uh, Lee, or, you know, from, from Back to the Future, like, looks so just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what? Yeah, she's just like, what? Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. It's yeah, like a short-term memory flash, just, okay, it's gone. <laughs> 
I wonder yeah. how many times she like because they may not even realize they were in this. I wonder how many times those celebrities that were there tell the story about the time that a large orange cat invaded their little VIP party, and they were like, "This this is so surreal. What what is what is happening? <laughs> Why?" Oh yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's like a bucket list for most of them. A bucket? Well, yeah, a bucket. <laughs> I can cross that off my list. Exactly. <laughs> well, and also, too, uh, and just the way it was done, because I, I, as I've explained to people, it's pretty much one notch above being a tourist and being at some party and having somebody that you're with going to talk to celebrities while they basically video it. I mean, that's pretty much all it is. Yeah. So, did um, did, did he pay you for this, like, that day? Like, what's the... Because, I mean, you got to think, that's the kind of like the weird thing is like, okay, well, we're going to thrust you into this uh, this VIP thing. Like, what did... Did Eric ask you to do anything else that was kind of odd for this, you know, and did he pay you for it? Because, like, we heard about a certain thing involving you having to wash the cool cat mobile is what we're going to call it. <laughs> the cool cat car. That is absolutely true. What happened was he would not write me my check until I helped him wash the convertible in the parking lot of his apartment, and it had all those decals on there. So we're talking about like a 12, 13-hour day, and he's still he's at nighttime, and he's got me out there helping him wash the the convertible to peel the stickers off and also too uh i forgot about this i do not remember what voiceovers i did but he had me also do a couple of more voiceovers so finally after all of that was done then he wrote me my check jeez and that's and we're speaking about the same convertible that was the rental vehicle correct correct the one from the enterprise correct yep i that has to be an awkward conversation to walk up to the clerk and be like, yeah, White I need to rent a car. What for? It's like, um, I'm filming this thing. <laughs> and they kind of look yeah. at it like, what? Well, I need more elaboration because I need to make sure you have the proper insurance and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Orange yeah. Insurance. <laughs> Orange has got you covered. <laughs> like, what? No. <laughs> Dude, that, well, and also, well, and also too. I mean, I highly doubt any of that stuff was ever told about. You know, oh, this is what we're doing it for. Because even the stuff when we were at the school for uh, Cool Cat Finds a Gun, it's not like we had a permit to go shoot at the school. So we shot when the school was closed. So yeah, there there would have never been any proper paperwork. Yeah, that was kind of going into – you kind of beat us to that question, man. We were going to ask, like, how, how did that happen? Because um, it didn't look – again, like most of these films, once you've seen – I feel like if you've seen one, you've seen all of them, basically. Like, it yeah. didn't it didn't look like a lot of new footage was shot for this stuff. So, I mean, how, how did that happen? And, and, and before that, actually, I forgot to ask also to elaborate – what was it like being in the suit? Because that thing cannot be comfortable, and especially after a 13-hour day. No. Oh, the, the suit is very uncomfortable. Uh, what happens is there is a mechanism in the right hand, which uh, it literally looks like the equivalent of a, a bicycle. It's on, like, the handlebars, and that's, that's what it looks like. So it's a device similar to that that I would squeeze with my right hand, which was very difficult to squeeze, and it gave me blisters very quickly. Mm. That's what the, it would make the mouth move. So trying to do all of that and then be in the suit and then compensating for the fact that I didn't want this awkwardness on camera, like, okay, well, the character still – but you see this little bit of hand, of movement in his hand. What's up with that? Does he have some weird type of twitch or something? <laughs> so, so then to compensate for that, I was making, I was adding all of this physicality into the character, which he let me add because uh, his main direction uh, was always, "Oh, Jason, you need to shake your butt more. The kids want to see you shake your butt." Which <laughs> I never did. Wait, I wait, never wait, wait, wait. Understood hold, that. Hold on, hold on. He makes you shake your butt. For kids? That 
that's what he would always say. It's like, oh, well, you know, kids message me, and they always say that, you know, the character should shake his butt more. First off, why so, are kids messaging this man? Second, on oh, what, my God. On, on what forum? I want to know, where does he... <laughs> Where are these kids? Let's be, yeah, please excuse us. We are uh, taken <laughs> very much aback by that. Oh, man. This has gone down really deep, oh. really fast. <laughs> yeah, I have never, I have never understood. In fact, it was funny. Uh, there was, because uh, what happens is when people leave like a YouTube comment on something that I've written, it'll, it'll come to my email. And uh, somebody had uh, put a comment uh, to Ryan and like I had gotten the email because like I had written something in there and it said something like oh if you give, if you ever get to uh, uh, interview Eric Garbage you should ask him why he would always tell Jason to shake his butt <laughs> uh, just... so, yeah I, you can't I have see never it. understood yeah, why it, uh, where that comes from you can't see it but we we just we both have the most disgusting Disgusted looks on our faces right now. It's just like one of those moments where it's like I can't. I we, we okay. We have heard, we have seen some difficult things to process, but this is kind of getting far above that right now. Yeah, and I mean, we've even been told like by your social manager, like your social media manager, and everything. Or I say social media, like basically, you know, your you know correspondence or whatever that like. We've been pretty dead on as far as what we were thinking was going on with certain things, but th this takes the cake, dude. Like by far, <laughs> this takes the absolute <laughs> cake. It's like the cherry on top of the diarrhea cake. It's not even up for debate. But is it really a cherry? <laughs> no, it's not it's a, a cherry. Rotten cherry. It is. It's the actual worst. God, this is low it's, budget. You know, you know what it is? You know what it is, Cody? What's that? It is the it is the corn that's in the oh. diarrhea. That's what it is. It's the piece of corn well, on top of that diarrhea cake. Well, well, the films are corny too, so I mean, there's that. I mean, you know. <laughs> this is a whole new image like spectrum now. Oh, okay. Cool crap. Yep. Cool crap. Yeah, cool crap. <laughs> corn, corn crap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why does that sound like a cereal he would make? Like just. Yeah. <laughs> Bought my new cereal, corn craps. Oh, stays crunchy. You imagine him. But you know what? Too, he would do those. He would do his own commercials. Oh God. <laughs> do we even dare dwell on that? Yeah. I mean, oh, no. Like every, no, 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 no. no. Like everything. It'll yeah. be burned. It'll be burned in your mind. What is uh, what is not burned in our minds at this point? Exactly, <laughs> like this, the, dude. The rabbit hole that Cody and I went down just just to research because we we've done episodes before. We did one on, um, we did one on the gun safety video, and then we did one on 420 and like all this other stuff separately. But dude, we did it. We we dove into the rabbit hole even more so since the crazy dream thing came out. I I think my brain is mush. I I, I have no idea how we are sitting here cohesively having a conversation right now. <laughs> but There's a switch that we it, shut off at certain points. It's like, you know what? Eh, mm, we're good. It, mm. it, it goes deep. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's a deep, nasty, weird hole. It's like a bad acid trip. Speaking of deep, nasty holes, well, did, you, <laughs> did you and Garbage ever have any kind of, like, issues with scripting, dialogue for the character? Because... A lot of his dialogue in general was just horrid it's at, most, at most points of the films. So we can basically assume that Garbage wrote most of it. Oh, yeah. He, he wrote pretty much all of it. Uh, I know that he let me improv a couple of lines here and there. I don't remember which ones. I do know that he would write things that were such tongue twisters that um, I would... A couple of times I got to readjust a couple of words here and there, but for the most part, it is his g genius diatribe that you see. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I can just picture I can just picture Eric Garbage sitting at uh, at the desk with uh, with your computer, from what I hear, typing mm -hmm. all of this stuff out. Like, hmm. This sounds like it's going to be good. We're just going to put this in here. It's just as bad as the as the lyrics to the music. Like, hold on, hold on, stop for a second. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, what, what? Is he using Jason's computer? 
that Apple computer is Jason's. No. From what I understand. Hold, hold, no, on, no, 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 no. hold on a second. Hold on a second. Is he using his computer to talk to these kids? That sound you just heard was I, me dropping my stuff. I, yeah. I don't know uh, which one he's using, but um, the ones that you would see in there, that is uh, in the old stuff. That's not mine. What was okay. my Apple computer was in the, uh, the last one that I did with him which is Cool Cat Kid Superhero during the Cool Cat Rap Master. Yes. There's... I was going to say, yeah, because this there, is like... Yeah, because this is there's like... There's like the scene in there. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Save... my computer. Yeah, because Save the Kids and then Kid Superhero is basically one of the same. Like, I feel like... I think that's the same yeah. with like a, a couple minor edits, and that's about it, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> There, there was uh, seven new scenes that we shot for that, which was all in one day. There was originally supposed to be more scenes, but what happened was he he literally thought that I was not memorizing my lines fast enough, and he thought that I would not be ready. So he pulled the plug on the date trimmed out some of the scenes and then we just ended up with seven new scenes. I want to say that maybe in total it was supposed to be maybe like 12 new scenes, but it only, wow. it only ended up being seven. So he actually... And he, was, and he was actually supposed to have a kid. There was actually supposed to be another kid in there too, and that never happened either. Mm-mm. So the same man that we know reuses footage actually made new footage. That's kind of contradicting itself. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, there was actually also new stuff that was shot from when the from when the shorts were cut together, the finding the gun, the stops bullying, and the parade. Uh, there was a few of those. There was a few new scenes that were shot for all of those uh, aggregated together for the release of Saves the Kids, which was like the the school president thing and a few things like that. But yeah, there really wasn't a whole lot of new scenes when stuff was all added together for a feature mm. i'm kind of curious though like going back to the whole like writing the script and stuff like there i know a lot of people have caught this me and you especially richie yep the grammar had to been like we talked about earlier just hard to read so did you ever approach him and be like look i can't read this so do you mind if i you know just touch it up a little bit or edit it and did he give you any flack for it you know stuff like that he let me every once in a while adjust something, but it was it was pretty rare. I mean, he kind of wanted it the way he wrote it in a lot of ways. So yeah. Dude, and speak- and <clears throat> go ahead. Sorry. And also too, I don't know. Um, uh, we haven't brought this up, but uh, when he put himself in there for the finds of the gun thing, that was kind of another way of him uh, really stepping in to direct, not only from just directing like behind the scenes as being the director, but actually being the actor in there. Because he told me that he felt that these, you know, that he needed to be in there actually to supervise everything also. Oh, of course. So, By cutting costs. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, and I thought that was really strange in his reasoning because the subject was serious because it was the finding of a gun. Yeah. Uh, you okay. know, speaking of all yeah. of that though, there's there's like a couple points we wanted to bring up, which is kind of humorous on on <clears throat> our end, and I'm sure everybody else has watched these. So, he's got you scripted to find this gun with these kids, okay, and. It should be a very serious matter, okay? But it, it was very humorously delivered and, and very much like a so, you know, that so bad it's good echelon of, you know, filming or whatever. But the thing that we laughed at was he was supposed to put the gun in your hands, like the cat hands. Like, those are big hands. Like, how do you hold that gun, let alone type on a laptop keyboard? <laughs> like, how do you do this stuff, man? You know? You. Yeah. You, you can't. In fact, too, there were so many times I would see stuff in the script and I would say, I, I can't do that with the character. I'm not going to be able to pick that up. 
um, I realized very quickly the character can't pick anything up and he can't open doors. <laughs> That's so, why he holds the door for you. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. in fact, in fact, too, uh, there's even a scene when uh, he has to like when he would have to pick stuff up. I would have to purposely move stuff so close to the edge where it's almost going to fall off. So when we would roll, I would easily be able to go over in the character and pick up these objects. You know, so I, I mean, I mean, none of that stuff flew. It was obviously readjusted and it's just readjusted just so bad. It's just like, what? Okay. <laughs> You know, wow. if, if he ever made you pick up anything, it's like uh, those pooper scoopers, kind of like clamping together like yeah. a claw and just, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you figured he would, but no. Uh-uh. That was never the case. Man. There is there is that one time when uh, uh, there was a scene where uh, we were walking to the car and Garbage says, oh, let me get the door here for you. And, like, he opens the door from the inside when we're outside of the car because he can't, you know, you know, with the glove on, you know, open the door with the hands on every day. <laughs> I remember that. So, that was funny. Yeah. Said, then he has to, like, pick your tail up and put it in the car, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, Easy yeah. does it, son. Then, Watch your tail there, son. Like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Well, and then, and then, and then, too. There's another. There's another one with the tail that's in uh, finds a gun where I'm coming outside, you know, holding like the boombox thing, and the tail gets caught on like those rose bushes or something like I, that. I noticed so, that too. And, yeah. So there was there was all <laughs> kinds of weird things like that going on, but because of the tail or just. Because you know objects couldn't get picked up, it was just always, always just some weird thing like that. So that house, like we've talked about it before, um, that house is that the bodyguards, or is that a different house? Because Eric Garbage doesn't necessarily sometimes come out and say it, but it seems like he act he he projects this home to actually be his. This is not his house, correct? No, it is not. It belongs to the uh, fella. The, uh, the tall African-American fellow that uh, is in Crazy Dream, and he's in uh, uh, some of the other stuff. Uh, he owns he owns that house. That guy was uh, Garbage's former agent. He owns that house where uh, all, all the Cool Cat stuff was shot. In fact, uh, in fact that um, in fact that bedroom is the. Um, that was his bedroom. So the the owner's bedroom? Yeah, yeah, the owner's. Yeah. So like in a way, he paid him to use the house by putting him in certain films. Maybe that was his pitch. He's like, "Oh, let me use your house. I'll put you in I'll put you in this movie or something." I'll edit you in here. Does Well, he well, he was he was renting a room there at the time. Oh, Eric was? Yes. Hmm. Oh, that. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. That opens a couple of doors. <laughs> yeah, literally. Right. Right. So um, I think that was certainly an incentive type thing there. But even before uh, Eric Garbage was running running a rope there, he let him use the house. So he was actually. I mean, he was actually pretty nice about that. And then the backyard where the character finds the gun that was just in the backyard of the house. That's also the same backyard where uh, Eric Garbage is doing the commas thing. Uh, where he's, yeah, so, where he's smacking yeah. that tree. God, that is so cringy. Smacking the tree. Right. Yeah, and, and then you're right. holding, and like your big old like cat hand holding that little bitty like handheld camera during that. Yeah. I found yeah. I found that whole part very unnecessary because what is it trying to prove? It's proving that that Eric Garbage is uh, terrible at at commas. Yeah, it's proving that he's 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 uh, he, he's he's he wants to be this uh, this this bad boy yeah. as he would say. What, is, old, what is it? Comma, <laughs> comma safety. Yeah, he's uh, as his stick skills, his stick safety skills. He's sticking to them. Coming soon from Eric Garbage. Stick safety well, for I, women. <laughs> 
and men too, <laughs> and possibly cats. Well, I, well, <laughs> I think it was the same thing almost with the guitar. It was just kind of things that he thought were cool that he just thought what he would insert in there. Because, I mean, I even remember reading that script and I'm when he's talking about him with the commas, you know, and I'm supposed to go out with the camera and, like, you know, spy on him and, like, all this other stuff and just, like, making commentary about him using the commas. I remember when I was first reading that, I was just like, what the heck is this? This makes no sense. So, and I just kind of chalked it up to one of those things that were just that so many other scenes are just basically scene filler. I have to ask a question, just not in particular to you, but just like a broad general question to anybody listening. How does a man who has very little grammar skills know how to use commas? Yeah. A lot of free time. It's kind of weird. A lot of free time. Maybe didn't have friends. There's, there's a huge contradiction yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <that's> yeah. <laughs> Lots of free time. Contrast- yeah. Contradiction. Contradiction, yeah. yeah. There you go. But yeah, so like all that was just nuts, man. Like just looking at all that footage, just it feels like it all just like again, it just it's just one giant like conglomeration of crap, you know? Like, well, well, and that well, and that's another thing too. Is I mean, if you just really look at that stuff, none of those, hardly any of those stories are ever finished being told. No, they're not. I mean, in my. I mean, in my opinion, I think the strongest story is from the original shoot, uh, Stops Bullying, because if you really look at that, the character learns everything from Vivica Fox, because she's the one that says, would you like to know what I did to the bully? You know, when the bully came around, I just told the bully to leave me alone. So then when that character comes back around... You know, and he's like, you know, you know, you're not going to bully us anymore and everything. I mean, he, he learned that from the Vivica character. So that was like the only little kind of story that actually he seemed to have like a beginning and a middle and an end because the whole gun thing is so full of holes. It's like, well, you know, oh, we found this gun. It's like, well, whose yard were you in? And that's who the gun belongs to. It's so full of bullet holes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> son's son, son full of bullet holes from that guy. It is. Oh, no. But honestly, yeah, that PSA from Vivica was just terrible. Yeah, see, that's what I was going to say, too, man, also, is, like, when Vivica and uh, Eric, the other Eric, not Garbage, worked on that set that day, like, did they know they were going to be doing the PSA and did Eric garbage, like actually pay them for all this? Like, and how much, how much did they even make for this? Cause I mean, you wouldn't think that those two would do something. How much? I'm sorry. Thousand each. A thousand each. Wow. Yeah. That was just for just for the one day. I don't think that, uh, he paid her for the PSA. And originally, uh, I was going to be in the outfit doing the PSA, but, and I was excited about doing this. I'm like, oh, great. I, you know, I could do another scene with her. And I was, you know, happy about that. And that was actually at her house. And he had called me at the last minute. And he said, yeah, she just wants to just do an in and out thing. And that's it. Yeah, and it didn't come out that great at all. She honestly, you know, and it's just our opinion, you know, but she didn't look very thrilled about it. And I, uh, I mean, well, that's how it came I think she off. got talked into it. That's what happened. Oh, that good old uh, that good old car salesman pitch. That nice yeah. garbage charm. <laughs> it's yeah. not a car salesman. Yeah. It's, a, it's not a car salesman. It's a garbage truck salesman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how, dude, how does he keep funding this stuff? Like, honestly, I mean, I mean, I know he crowdfunds, but if he keeps repackaging all this footage, like, where does this money actually go? I mean, the dude has raised a th- like thousands of dollars for these movies, but. The production quality just does not show at all, and I mean it. Well, I, we know where two thousand of it went, right? But like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he, I feel like he pockets this stuff, you know, and scams a lot of people out of this stuff. It's it's ridiculous. I I, I do know that uh, he was um, working as a uh, as a uh, recruiter for a now defunct trade school. So I do know that a lot of that money was used to fund uh, stops bullying, and some of that may have went into finds a gun. 
I'm not sure, but I do know that probably by the time, probably by the time after Finds a Gun was finished shooting, so probably sometime late 13, he no longer had that job at that trade school. So I think that's when a lot of crowdfunding and just these, even even though corners were cut before, that's that's when corners really started getting cut. So the fact there was crowdfunding involved is just it it hurts my brain. Like yeah. in, in reality, because like we talk about, it's just so hard to believe that people will look at this and actually want and they want more. You know, so they give him money to just produce more of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really strange. It, uh, I think that even though I'm not going to be doing it, I still think that there are people out there that no matter what that man does, they are going to watch. It's like this train wreck that you just cannot turn away from, and I think people just want to see how far he's going to go down. And and I, as long as he keeps putting stuff out there, people are going to continue to click on it. It's yeah. it's strange. It's I I really don't get it. Yeah. I mean, it, I've been I've been trying to figure it out for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it fall it definitely does fall into that circle because, like you know, like our podcast, like we Cody and I review cult films all the time, and you know, and a lot of those are B movies or like cult films from. You know, the 70s, 80s, 90s, and onward. And a lot of it's like, you know, for the so bad it's good, you know, entertainment value and things like that. And I think that's what the, and I hate to use this word, but that may be what the quote unquote charm of it is to those people that haven't like experienced the negative side of these movies and things like that. And it's just something to laugh at with a group of friends. And I don't think, yeah. Eric, I don't think Eric Garbage realizes that people that watch these are watching them ironically. They are not serious about it. And I can't. Can't even fathom these movies being shown to children of any like any type like in a serious manner. And if, if that's happening, oof. <laughs> but as they know more about it, though, I mean, they're gonna realize that they don't want to associate any kind of like viewing of his stuff. Period. To give him any kind of publicity whatsoever, because you can't really take him professionally seriously on any moral standard at this point. Yeah. No, that's true. In, in fact, too, going back to the comment you made earlier, I remember. When uh, Saves the Kids came out, I remember him calling me, and people were writing reviews on Amazon. And obviously, some of those reviews about saying how it was the best film ever and stuff like that, I mean, that's obviously people yanking his chain. Well, he took those serious, I mean, he was just calling me up, like, just in shock of, like, you won't believe these beautiful reviews we're getting. These things are just great. And, they're, they're spectacular. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm just like, uh, okay, and and at the time period too, I really kind of just blew a lot of that off, just because I was just kind of glad that it was done, and I really just didn't think it was going to continue on. And then flash forward a couple of years later, in 2017, I, you know, back with him doing um, kid superhero. So now. Yeah. Now, I don't know. now, a story about superhero, and I want to say, I don't remember if this was on superhero or saves the kids. Again, like we've said before, it all runs together. What, can can you answer this for us? It's it's been on a lot of people's minds. Why did Mama Cat's voice change? Like we we hear it has something to do with a specific incident that happened, um, and we'll let well, you decide if you want to get into that or not. But like, was that the catalyst for it? Yeah, well, originally he was saying, of course, that he wanted to get more of a of a of a known, recognizable voice, which is, I mean, that would cost a lot of money. Mm. But the original actress uh, that did the Mama Cat voice, she had told me on a couple of occasions. In fact, she had told me on set when she was helping us on set with. Um, saves the kids because she was helping me in and out of the outfit she had told me that eric garbage had um asked her out a few times and she had rejected him she rejected him yes she oh, rejected man. him so not which surprised. obviously he which obviously he did not like and he in his 
peanut brain thought that there must have been something going on between she and I, because after the final shoot day, she lived across the street. She said, hey, you know, it's like a 30-minute drive back to your house. She's like, do you want to uh, just shower over here? And she's like, you know, I can open, you know, uh, uh, some wine. You could have like a drink or something. I was like, yeah, that's, you know, before you go back to your house. I said, yeah, that's cool. So I'm in the shower getting out. All of a sudden, he busts open the door to this woman's house. She's in another room in the house. The bathroom I am in is across from the house. I am nowhere near her. He comes busting in there with his black bro tank top thing, <laughs> looking for her and looking for me, thinking that something is going on. Oh, wow. When, of course, nothing was. I never even thought that way. I know that she didn't. And, yeah. Was this when y'all started having so, issues with each other? Uh, we weren't really having, we kind of started having some issues back then. They didn't really escalate till later. The issues with him and I really escalated, I would say, probably around May of 2017. Um, what happened at that time period, I was, I had made it very clear to him I that I could no longer just come by any time he wanted me to to get in the outfit and him to shoot a scene and just at any time like I had done before um, I was doing full time trying to do excuse me trying to do full time uh, videography and editing for like weddings and bar and bot and stuff like that so I was trying to do that work so I was at my own house editing my own stuff all the time and he had just kept calling me and just oh I you know I need you this day and he kept telling me I was flaking on on him and I kept telling him I wanted more money and that just really continued to escalate and at that time period he kept threatening me about oh I'll just get somebody else in the outfit and I'll just record over all your dialogue and I finally consented and just went ahead and gave in and did that one day shoot on um, Kid Superhero, which was in July of 2017. And that is the last time I have been in the outfit. And that's the last time I've actually laid eyes on him and been around him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't mean to cut you off earlier whenever you were kind of elaborating more on the, on the story with, um, like the whole shower debacle or whatever. Did you have, do you had something else to say about that? Or I just didn't, I didn't want you to feel like I cut you. No, 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 that, no, uh, uh, that, no, that's, uh, that's pretty much it on that. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was just so strange enough as it is. I mean, I didn't even know what to even make of it. Cause it was just like, what, what just happened here? What, why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm changing his name to black bro tank top. From black bro tank top. There you go. <laughs> Ram, uh, he wants to be Rambro. 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 But man, so did you do any other kind of stuff? Like, it, it seems like he was trying to get you to do stuff for free at this point or like less than nothing. Like, did he even pay you scale? I mean, we don't need to know a number, but like, uh, he, uh, no, uh, no, uh, he, there was, there was nothing like that. Uh, whatsoever. no, no scale, no anything. In fact, too, uh, I really, uh, when we had done the, um, the shoot for, um, uh, saves the kids, there had actually gotten to a point where there was literally no money left. So I had actually, myself and the kids had put in, uh, I think like one or two days for free. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and again, that was, you know, and it was him just convincing and begging like, Oh, well that'll be it. And the whole feet finished and all this and all this. So, and my mode of thinking was, and even back then he had given me the whole song and dance about uh, replacing me and, going over the lines and whatnot. And 
I never wanted that, and I kind of felt like that if I hung in there long enough, that a handful of people, which have, would know me as an actor and would know me from that, which has happened. So that's that was the main reason why I stuck it out as long as I did. And plus, I just knew the voice that he would use and just how he would change the character. And I'm not trying to sound egotistical, but I did a much better job than what he did. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. You, like, yeah. we've said this before, and I, I believe we've told you this, like, you know, before, you know, because we've spoken before, like, the interview, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, like, you, yeah. you were absolutely our favorite part of all of it. Like, your performance was our favorite part about all of it because as cringy as all of it is, you brought the character, like, to such, like, life, and you gave it, uh, you know, you gave it, like... The sustenance that it required, that yeah. it needed, basically. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I will say that throughout all of the craziness... I will say that I will always give garbage that he he did give me a lot of freedom with the physicality and like always putting the laugh in there and whatnot. Now a lot of that physicality that I did didn't go my way. Like for instance, this the scene I did a couple times where I would scratch myself and I'd shake the leg, and everyone thought it was a, you know masturbation, which that was not what I was thinking at all. I literally just thought the character needed to have some more animal-like quality, so just even more so like a cat, and that just kind of popped in my head, and I didn't even think anything about it whatsoever. Yeah. I just It was just this weird random instinct, <laughs> but... But when you're an actor, I mean, you sometimes you make bad character choices, and it's no big deal. It's like, okay, that sure. didn't work. Just try something else. Yeah, no exactly. big deal. Exactly. Yeah, because, I mean, not going to lie, that was our first thought when we saw that, because we cracked up so horribly on that scene. But at the same time, you know, like you said, you, you made a choice. It didn't pan out the way you thought it was going to. But at the same time, how did Bro Tank Top did not look at it and go, well, this is kind of strange, especially for what I'm trying to do. So why not take this out? You know, but he left it in there. Yeah. Yep. And it's been he did. He did. Yep. He it's, did. He did. Been... And that that was the other thing that I've never. Well, and that goes back to kind of almost going back to the beginning of uh, of what you were saying. What was it like on set? Um, there was really a lot of no time for retake. So, I mean, if something got done like that, if it was an accident, chances are it got left in there. Like, for instance, the uh, the one scene that everybody always talks about, and it's even made gifts on, of the person that walks out of the house in the background and then sees that we're shooting and then walks back in the house. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> So, and that was the thing. Everything was just literally rushed. There was never, there was just never a time to like, oh, well, you know, why don't you guys just uh, just feel it out here? And if you guys want to take the scene another direction, see if you can take it this direction or anything like that. There was never any of that stuff. In fact, he probably spent more time directing the kids. And of course, he probably did that just because they were kids and... It's not that they were bad actors or anything, but it's, I think he just needed to maybe just kind of pull more stuff out of them, or mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it was. Yeah, the kids are great. The mm -hmm. kids are great. So. Yeah, but I mean, he that that kind of stuff never went on with me hardly at all. Eric Garbage, so. the 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 one take wonder. <laughs> you know, like there's so yeah, many names. It's, yeah, it's almost it's it's, it's almost like uh, the uh, the filmmaker Ed Wood. You know, the Johnny Depp. Uh, you know, did the biopic on. Yep. So. It's, it's, yeah, it's literally kind of like that. Just one take master. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, uh, getting into some other um, little smaller tidbits before we uh, roll on to the next uh, kind of phase of all this stuff. Um, I heard about like uh, your agent told me that you you had you had done a phone call as the character that that he uh, he asked you to do that and oh yeah. <laughs> How did that yeah, go? Because, you know, that's interesting. <laughs> what happened was he had called me, and I guess somebody had contacted him from Amazon. 
and this gentleman had said, hey, Eric, um, would you have the character call my niece for her birthday? And so somehow the price of $20 got settled upon, which to me is beyond chicken feet, but whatever, that's neither here nor there. So I was like, okay, I'll call. So I called the girl up, and she was a teenager. I assumed I was going to be calling some seven, eight-year-old girl, and I'm sitting there talking to some teenager in the voice, in the character. She was very appreciative, but it was extremely awkward. I can imagine. Just Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I quickly saying happy birthday and just have a great day kind of thing and wrapped it up was and uh, then oh yeah <laughs> and eric and then eric garbage didn't even pay me my 20 dollars. he said he was going to take me out to a steak dinner instead he did take me out for the steak dinner but and that was only because i had helped him relocate from north hollywood to Las Vegas. Is that from whenever he? That's when he moved in to the, um, the the cat house, basically. That you got. That's when he. That that's when he moved out of it. He oh, moved out of it. Out of it. No, 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 no. Excuse me. No, no, no. Excuse me. No, you're right. No, yeah. He had moved. Uh, he hadn't moved to it yet. He was living at this other apartment. That apartment that I'm talking about. Those, if you look at those pictures from Crazy Dream with uh, garbage on the computer and all of that, yeah. that is in that apartment. So that just proves how old that, that is, footage is. Mm. Yes. That's the place I helped him move out of to Vegas. Then I helped him move from Vegas in late June of 16 to the cool, cool cat house. Wow. I'm still wrapping my brain around where did he get the money for not only a twenty dollar payoff but a steak dinner. Yeah, because you would think that he would go ahead and just pay you because the dinner would cost more. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah. yeah. I'm I, I'm still just kind of confused. Like, where is this money coming from? Yeah, because supposedly because supposedly he was know. like bled dry at one point. You know, when he was filming everything. I I, I don't know. I have I have never been able to figure it out, and that's I think it's the one thing, and 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 I say this uh, for me on actually still just somewhat of a concern, you know, trying to be at one time a friend. I really wondered like, how are you doing this? Like, shouldn't you be concerned about? you know, getting your life kind of back on track and, you know, paying bills and whatnot versus trying to, you know, sink every little extra dime into just, you know, making another extended version of one of these movies or something like that. I just, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, we kind of had the same sentiment too um, on um, episode 77 that we did because I remember, I, I remember sitting there when, when Cody and I were talking about all this on mics and it was not even a slap it's not even a slight even now it's not even a slight it's like how lonely is this guy like is he just sitting alone constantly thinking of different things that he can film and like he's got no wife got no kids like none of this stuff like it, it's it's kind of sad in a sense you know what i mean like i get yeah, like what yeah. you were saying now like yeah. trying to be a friend to him at the time it's kind of sad and worrisome at the same time but yeah. it's I, I don't know. Yeah. I, th I think at the end of the day, you know, for all that's happened, you know, that we'll get into here in a minute, like, I, I just, I can't at the same time feel sorry for it. Like, I feel like you put yourself in certain situations and you have to take yourself out of them, right. you know? Well, no, that, no, that's, that's, that's absolutely true. I mean, he, he pretty much dug his own hole with that. I, I, I still for the life of me just don't understand his, reactions with all of that and just things have continued to just get you know crazier and crazier and crazier and then the fact of even even if he and i you know were still talking it's like well you know you know you're 
five and a half hours away in Las Vegas. You don't have the budget for me to come to and from anyway. So it's like eventually this would just have to end anyway. Yeah. So, and also too, there has never been any type of other outside producer, outside money involved. He, he never told me anything about, Oh, I'm going to this pitch meeting over at this studio. Or I'm meeting with this producer or whatever. There was nothing like that. And I don't understand why there is, why there ever wasn't. I mean, I guess it obviously has to do with control. That's the only answer I can assume. Um, so I don't know. In fact, too, um, I remember when uh, Stops Bullying first came out and he had put it on DVD, he wasn't prepared for the cost of trying to enter it into film festivals. Mm. Yeah, because and, that costs, and people yeah. don't realize that. That That is a thing. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And the, entry, and the entry fees are not cheap either. No, they're not. And that and he, so instead of doing that, he immediately started trying to monetize. And it's like, how are you going to monetize on a six-minute short? It's like, unfortunately, filmmakers have a hard time understanding, but... If you do a short film, that has to you have to that's your stepping stone. You use that as your springboard to get funding for your feature or even just another short that then you use for a springboard to get funding for. And that means going to film festivals and just stuff like that. And it's expensive, but it's just it's part of the game. You just you can't get around it. Yep. You know? Yep. So he, he that was certainly something that he just couldn't grasp when we first started everything and then that's what started just you know all of the monetizing on it from way back then and everything else so mm -hmm. i yeah. now at this point and everything we feel like somebody have had to you know either fire you or you know cut you from everything completely so was there ever an official like pink slip kind of way, like you're you're taken out because obviously there's been a lot of issues building up to this point, and things didn't go well. And I'm assuming something happened to where y'all don't work together anymore. <clears throat> yeah, like did anybody actually quote unquote fire you? Nope, nobody. Uh, no firing. No phone call. No email. No nothing. Nothing well, like that whatsoever. Well. That kind of leads us to this next bit that we're going to get into. Um, mm -hmm. There is another person that has worked on these movies alongside Eric Garbage that actually has been claiming that he has fired you in 2018. And that particular person is Derek Savage. And he claims he fired you in 2018. That's correct, right? That is incorrect. He did not. All right. I figured that. Okay. Well... Since that was in 2008, we actually have our hands provided, you know, to us, a voicemail that is dated on February 7th, 2019, from Derek, that we're actually going to be playing right now. So hang tight, uh, Jason, we're going to play this real quick and we'll come right back, all right? All right, sounds good. Hey, Jason, what's happening? It's Derek. Hey, just wanted to touch base with you and say hi. Hey, you know, 420 Awards is going on, brother, and it looks like um, Cool Cat's going to win an award. So, hey, it's love to have you in it. I've also thought of a way where we can have you present award as Jason Johnson also, you know, to get your FaceTime and everything on there. Okay, well, hey, buddy, um, give me a call a little bit later. It's, it's still early, about 9 o'clock. Okay, God bless, bye. So, bless, yeah. Bye. Yep, God bless, bye. But so he's, he's offering you to show up to the 420 Awards to win an award as Cool Cat and to show up as you, Jason Johnson, to get some FaceTime on stage at, at this event. Um, that sure sounds like a friendly term for, you know, and very friendly sounding, obviously, in the voicemail, uh, for somebody that claims to have fired you last year. Like, how did, what is going on with that? Kind of weird, huh? Well, yeah, it, just, it very is. Yeah, it just goes to show, like, everything else, it just random things he likes to 
right online that aren't true. That sounds about right. And obviously, um, you know, you would never show up to the 420 Awards as this character. You know, it's a kid's character. Like, why, why would there be, you know... You know, this is this is obviously going back to Eric garbage. Um, why would Eric want this children's character at an award show called the 420 Awards? Like that that boggles our mind. I I don't know. In fact, I literally remember having that conversation. I was yeah, I was in my car. I was talking to garbage on the phone, and I told him. I said if. And I, I said, there is no way that this can be done. I said, if this is done, once this door is open, you will never be able to close it. Uh, it's like you, I was like, you, that is it for that character ever trying to do anything kid friendly ever again. And uh. yeah, and I and I said, I just didn't want anything to do with it whatsoever. And also, too, as as I have, um, um, I lost my train of thought. No, it's okay. Time. Oh, yeah. And also, too, it, if I were to have gone, then there would have been all of this extra shooting involved that I would not have wanted to do. Plus, you know, I would have brought my fiance with me and we would have had, like, you know, this time in Vegas, it's, I would have had to pay for on my own dime. Mm. And I just did not want to do that. Don't blame me one bit. That was a smart call. Yeah. Um, seems like you've always had to talk Eric Garbage out of, like, dumb ideas like this. Um, oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, I, yeah, I have. And, 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 you know, and plus two, I, you know, I haven't given him consent to use my footage or likeness and, you know, that video for, like, the crazy dream or any of that. Yeah. And, like, we'll get into that in just a second, too. Um, but, you know, like, speaking of the stupid ideas, um, the Stops a School shooting video, like, before Crazy Dream was decided upon, he, Eric wanted to make Stops a School shooting, and this is this is happening during a time when mass attacks are happening right here in the States. It's, it's, it's not good. Um... You know, were you ever going to do this movie? No, I was not. In fact, to I, and I mean, I feel you know very strongly about the narrative of school shootings, and I would not do a movie like that. I mean, to me, school shootings are extremely heartbreaking reality. Right. I mean, th this year alone, um, Sydney Aiello committed suicide. She was the second suicide of a student from the Parkland school shooting. She was only 17 years old. I mean, you know, these, these you know, the, our elementary schools, our junior high schools and our colleges, these universities, I mean, these should be safe places, yeah, you know, absolutely. but instead they've got metal detectors and they've got these, you know, school shooting drills and the victims and the families of these school shootings. I mean, they're affected by these things every day. And so many of them, um, you know, suffer PTSD and depression. And I don't want any part of that, of having people, you know, having these memories triggered and having to go through that. And not to mention having to see someone dressed up in a costume and shooting kids. Yeah, and because it, that's, ugh. you know, it, it's sad. You know, and as a, you know, we should be coming together you know, with tragedies like this, instead of trying to just make these mock videos, trying to capitalize on these tragedies, you know? And that was the thing that you mentioned, like, why would you associate this character with something as negative as this? I mean, the 420 Awards is one thing, but, sh like, shootings in general is just, like, a whole nother, like, like, dark entity yeah. in the person's brain that, like you oh, mentioned, yeah, Jason, no. like, you don't want to associate this character with those, you know, PTSD moments. And then as kids who watch this, who have gone through this stuff, like, they're just having these mental images pop in their heads again. And they're traumatized yet again because he wants to portray what it's like to go through that. 
and yeah, it's, just, I mean, it's just not a good yeah. idea. It's no. not a good idea at all. And this, no, it's terrible. Yeah, and you know this goes into other stuff about this. Is the the fact that Eric tried to hook Felix, a uh, PewDiePie, into basically funding this this thing, and that is laughable in and of itself because the dude didn't even like realize that. Felix was trolling the hell out of him whenever he did his review, um, as a lot of other people have done reviews of his work. And he wound up, you know, this kind of ties into the, the new short film, um, which, again, like the whole Felix thing was laughable, and you know, but, you know, he's, he's trying to crowdfund uh, the school shooting project on Indiegogo. He gets about maybe, I can't remember the exact number, but it was like close to like seven or eight grand turns around, changes the name of the project, and changes it to Cool Cat's Crazy Dream. Um, like, that whole that whole situation just reeks completely. Oh, it, 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 it totally reeks of it. And it still, it still bothers me that not only did he do that bait and switch, but also, too, that he was still wanting to do a friggin' school shooting. I mean, I mean my heart in prayers, go out to those victims and the families and the teachers, and all of those people have to live through something like that. And why he would want to capitalize on something like that is just insane to me. And why he just thinks that some high-pitched character in some orange suit is going to be the Superman savior. And then, you know, making a mockery of you know, the murderer who would go in and do something like that by putting it in some costume. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's twisted. I mean, I, I don't know why did he, out of, out of, I mean, in my opinion, if you're going to do, it's like, you know what, you need to stop. Then, okay, why not stopping date rape or just, you know, sex trafficking? I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. to me, it's just that deep of a subject where it's just, you don't go there or if you're going to go there, you have to do it in a serious tone. You can't mm -hmm. do it with costumed characters in this tone. It's just, it's just not going to come out right. I don't care who you are. It's just not going to come out right. Especially with the reputation that he holds with not holding criticism very well. Like He tends to refuse to listen to people's suggestions about how to approach in any situation in general so i don't understand oh, yeah. i don't understand how you can go forward knowing that there is a lot of issues in general with this topic and still try to pursue something that's going to trigger even more of an issue with it absolutely and then like the three of us are sitting here discussing it also on top of that like you said jason putting it in a uh, costumed character he he was going to like hook the uh the the bully character into doing this but then it got changed to the dirty dog character that just got introduced yep. like that's supposed to be yep. the freaking character that shoots a school up it's it's it wouldn't be taken seriously it would it would be mocked all over the place and we do not need that no no we don't no we don't need that and also too uh i i, I mean i mean it's it's what little bit of dignity could possibly be left with that character, and I don't think there's much, would all be completely eradicated if this actually did get made, which I highly doubt it would. Yeah, I agree. Same. And um, I, and then when then what's sad too? I mean, I've often wondered, like, I mean, just even the other child actors, I mean, even kids being extras, it's like, and their parents, I mean, it's like, what would you tell, I just can't imagine parents just like, oh yeah, that's great, you know, you know, oh, you've got a few lines in this, you know, school shooting movie, it's going to be fun for you, you know, I just, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's a whole another uh, rabbit it, hole, like, how do you tell kids yeah. involved in this film to reenact what actual kids have gone through? Yeah. yeah, and yeah, and then too, and then you know, oh, here comes the savior. You know, here he is in his outfit. It's like, are you kidding? It's like, really? What's up, Captain Orange? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Just, oh, it, yeah, yeah, like, I yeah. I, I have, I have no words. Like, I mean, I do, but I don't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and <sighs> well, it, yeah, and even too, um, and I have forgot about this, but uh, but my my fiance had reminded me that uh, she knows 
one of those guys, one of those Columbine survivors, and that guy can't walk. I mean, he's you know wheelchair bound for the rest of his life, and it's just like you know, you just think of something like that, and then you just you know just you know think of these costume characters trying to save the day, trying to stop one each. You know, save the day, and one's trying to stop the other one from shooting at the school. It's just like, like nuts. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. But, that, that's the perfect word to describe it, honestly. Yeah. But let's yeah. not. Let's try and you know we've kind of gone pretty deep in that darkness right there. But we can kind of yeah go way to you know a crazy another crazy part about it. Um, ironically. Ironically, crazy. the whole ordeal with the crazy dream short. Was that actually yeah. you in the film? Because, I mean, you we can know. tell you can tell that but, is not your voice. But for full transparency to everybody listening out there, Jason, was this you in the costume? That is me in the costume. Uh, that was shot in November of 2012. That is all unused footage from Hollywood, uh, uh, from the Hollywood Christmas Parade in 2012. I think. Some of that footage was on Saves the Kids because I do remember him telling me he was uh, c- going to cut a lot of the parade out for when he did Kid Superhero. And I haven't watched uh, Saves the Kids or Kid Superhero all the way through, and I can't remember when, so I can't remember how much parade footage is where. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And the funny thing is, too, the the gentleman that's in there, uh, the African American gentleman, I literally remember meeting him that day at Eric Garbage's apartment. He was the one that drove the convertible in the parade. Um, it was literally just him, Garbage, and myself all in that car, garbaging himself. Exactly. <laughs> now, did yeah. you, did you give consent for any of this footage to be reused? No, I did not give any consent for that footage to be reused whatsoever. Were you ever informed that this was going to happen? Nope, never informed that any of this stuff was ever going to happen. Okay. In fact, to, uh, I, in fact, I had kind of forgotten about that, and then until so I had uh, people were messaging me saying, "Hey, you know, he's got this new short," and then as soon as I saw that first scene, I was like, "Wait a minute." And then I saw the rest of it was just like, oh, no, he actually did it. He yeah. actually repurposed footage again. And it's and, uh, actually uh, the green screen section where you see the character sitting in the chair, that was actually a green screen that was hanging up in his kitchen that I helped him put up. And then he had me sit in the chair on some other shoot and sit there and introduce – you know, that whole dream sequence, which was literally shot seven years ago. Mm. And then he just takes all this, and it's very, very obviously Eric Garbage's voice, because we oh, yeah. all know, if, you, if you're listening to this podcast and you heard the opening segment, there is a distinct difference between Jason and Eric Garbage's voice when it comes to playing this character. One is good, the other one is garbage. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> um, it's very obviously not your voice. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, like, the, it just, it it blew my mind. It, it blew a lot of people's minds. It raised a bunch of questions. Mm-hmm. Um, meanwhile, to get further into these kind of things, dude, it, he never, um, never gave you top billing on any of this stuff. No, no, and that that was one of the things that always uh, kind of rubbed me the wrong way. In fact, if you ever watch in those, he would always bill me fifth, and he would always have the character billed first playing himself. And then he only put my name on the box on one of them, which was the Find the Gun. And all of those are out of print because they hardly ever sold. In fact, I remember going to Garbage's apartment several times and seeing boxes and boxes of all of these unsold DVDs and books, by the way, I might add. So he still has just a bunch of merchandise that has never been sold. Like, he, he just... Yeah, yeah. Hmm. In fact, too, uh, we did uh, this one kind of... Um, 
it wasn't a charity event. It was just some type of outdoor family event for the Burbank Police Department. And that's where that one uh, uh, PSA comes from, chief of the Burbank Police Department. Uh, and when we were there, he was trying to sell DVDs and stuff. And with every DVD that was sold, which only a few were sold, he was giving people books. Good Lord. Yeah, so hardly that merchandise moved at all. You so, know, so, and, yeah. so in a way, it's like the Disney vault, but it's the garbage vault. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. That, that's it's, pretty much exactly what it is. We have unused so, footage. We have non-sold stock here in the garbage vault. But yeah. Get it now before it goes back. It's, re- <laughs> it's, re- it's really sad too, because I mean, like, I'm sure, I don't know. There's, there's probably maybe a couple of rabid fans that might pay an extra couple of bucks on eBay for some of those. Ugh. I doubt it though, but you never know. Or it could be the most ironic thing. Like twenty years from now, a DVD of his could be worth like thousands of dollars. Are you, you really yeah. think it's going to be worth that? No, but you never know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, Monopoly money, but <laughs> because it doesn't exist anymore, it doesn't print, and oh, yeah. only only garbage releases it. It seems like yeah. it seems like this person is just living in his own alternate reality, and it's mm-hmm. just the most. Like we've said it before, it's a train wreck, but it's the most glorious, like bad train wreck to watch, and it's just, yeah, just yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a dumpster with a dumpster flames fire. in it on a train. It's a garbage just, fire, pretty much. Yeah. Well, I think uh, one thing that I've never seen that adds to it is I have never worked with a writer slash director that has ever. Uh, made commercials of his own product in the movie that you're watching. Yeah. And, <laughs> That's and, just... and then just have just this almost like this Billy Mays type approach <laughs> to filmmaking. But wait, it's, there's more. It's, <laughs> and, but wait, and I'm poor. With the, with the writing, because the character would talk in the third person. I mean, it almost felt very much like like propaganda films. It's like it's like almost like the stuff that like you know Stalin or like Hitler was showing to his people like in the 30s or something. Dude, why were well, you on the same wavelength? Very I was strange. Just, I was thinking Hitler the exact same time you were talking about oh that. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. and because, it's uh, it's it, it, it's 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 very odd, and I've it's. It's all, it's like this weird infomercial that was somehow got made into fe- uh, features. It's it, it's just strange. I've never seen anything like it. I'm sure that most of the online community probably could say the same thing, and hopefully we never will see anything like that again. I mean, just a gun safety video where he pins all of the. Yeah, the characters' videos and merchandise and everything. He, like you said, he just Billy mazes the whole thing and just, yeah, for a good five. What was it? Five minutes, dude. Yeah, and it was just, yeah. it was so cringe too because you know I I made a comment. I remember this comment. I said, you know, if I'm watching, like, if I were legitimately watching this to not do a review on it, and I truly was buying into this, why as an adult would I want to see this gigantic tangerine? cat in the yeah. middle of this yeah. video it would take me completely out of it and i would sit there going did somebody like you know if it's almost like the vhs thing somebody tapes over like a part of of the movie like who who dropped this uh clip in here was this an accident how did this happen you it's know? like if, it's yeah. like if your child records over your wedding with cartoons <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's, it's literally like well, and, and that's the other thing too is that uh, that was another thing that I found so jarring is that because of these, he would break the fourth wall, and it would take you out of the suspension of disbelief. It would take you out of the store. It's like I mean, it's almost like in fifties television, like you know, like the Honeymooners is brought to you by you know Kellogg's cereal. You know, <laughs> here's Ralph. Kellogg's cereal was great. You know, don't you like it? You know, it was. 
Oh, nobody did television in the fifties like that. It was it was it was kind of like that. It was just it was just so bizarre, and it 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 does it takes you out of the story, and it's yeah. like well, what's going on here? It's like how do you get how do you get back in the story once you do that? I mean, once you lose the audience, you lose the audience. You can't get them back. Exactly. I it's mean, like, any 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 stand up comedian knows that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, now I don't know how to shoot a shotgun thanks to this intro infomercial. Well, I got you get shot yeah. in the face. You, you know, sh- you know what's funny. Uh, I don't know uh, how much of this ever got out there, but originally in that scene where he's in the desert showing that gal how to shoot the shotgun, uh, originally uh, Mister Bieber's face was on the target. Yep. Mm. Yeah, that's the- and. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he removed it, and I I can't remember how much of that got out, and people knew that, or I it's so, so much has happened. It's kind of hard to like remember it's, the con- which controversy was which controversy. Exactly, dude, and, and that, that's bad when you get to that point in this whole debacle. It's like which <laughs> controversy is which, and how bad is this one compared to the last one? Exactly, know? and I feel like this is yeah. just like the one we're on now. Um, it just seems like it's it's again it's taking that cake again it's take it's taking it, you know. Um, yeah. And you know before well, we get, yeah I was gonna say before we get into it honestly like there, there were some things about as far as giving you top billing and stuff uh, still like the guy uh, Eric seems to create fake names for himself so he can give credits in these films when there's other people like that. You know, Yes, in fact, to the biggest one, which uh, thank God no longer exists on IMDb, was Angel Hope. And uh, what would happen was I don't know uh, how much the listeners know this, but uh, if a, if an actor uh, does uh, what do you call like body double work for the character, he gets labeled as the body double Mm -hmm. he is not the actor he's not playing that character so there were times that he would get in the outfit because he couldn't pay me and then he would just make up this name angel hope and give him character and give him credit for playing that character even if it was just in just like something simple, like walking away or something, like a pickup just some shot. simple shot like that, no mm-hmm. dialogue, nothing. Yeah, yeah, it was just it was very strange. I mean, like for instance, too, uh, I did body double work on Shutter Island. I played Mark Ruffalo's body double oh, okay. for a few shots. Hmm. I mean, literally, Martin Scorsese directed me, and he, he directed me via satellite. He wasn't there on set, but. If you go on IMDb, it says, and you have to go down to the other crew section, it says, you know, Jason Johnson, you know, and whatever, you know, Mark Ruffalo body double. I'm not character, I'm not credited as playing the Mark Ruffalo character. And in Eric Garbage's mind, that's like the way stuff should be. It's like, no, you're just a body double. It's It happens all the time. Mm-hmm. I it. mean, I mean, any, I mean, I mean, so many times when you watch movies, if you see a close up of an actor's hand, that's not that actor's hand. That's a body double's hand. Yeah. You know, and yes, you should credit that person for being the body double, but you don't give them full credit as if they played that character. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, what about him and, cr- crediting people that are not in the movie? Cause... Oh, well, this is that's an interesting story. Um, there, all of these people are credited as producers. They sure. were never producers. Um, for instance, the gentleman, uh, his name is Art Nalls. If I mispronounce his name, I, it's like, it's, I know his first name's Art. I think his last name is Nalls or Nails, something like that. Yeah. But he has literally never shown up on set to any of those movies. I've never met the man. I don't know what the man looks like. But yet he is credited as a producer. And the only reason why he is is because he has that Harrier jet. Oh, you mean the one from the PewDiePie movie pitch where he's like, we're going to have yes. the first, we're going to be the second film to have a Harrier jet in it, and it's going to have the cat on it. And you're just like, oh, God. Yep, yep. 
Yeah. And and that was his whole that was his whole thing. It's like he would just want to use these weird things that he could get a hold of and just like and like somehow work that in. I mean, don't get me wrong, True Lies is a great movie, but that is the least thing I remember from that movie is that dang Harrier jet. That movie would have been great without the Harrier jet. You didn't need the Harrier jet in the movie True Lies. No, you have Schwarzenegger, and that's enough. Exactly. No, and, you mean no, no, you Curtis. mean Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> May the Schwartz be with you. Oh my yeah, God. yeah. <laughs> You know, at this point, I would have sound. It would have seemed just as ridiculous. We would have called the Harrier Jet Art Nalls, like Art Nalls as the Harrier Jet. Yeah, 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 literally. Like, yeah. Walks up to the jet, yep. Art, and you just hear clang, yep. like he's knocking on it, clang, clang, Art. Hello, <laughs> just really. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is my good friend Art, right? Ting, like, ting, ting. All this stuff, right? All this stuff is so bizarre. We could not put it past Eric Garbage to do that <laughs> so. no no uh-uh. no uh-uh. well and also too and speaking of crediting uh like i don't know if you know this but uh, on the box how he has this uh like this one fella that's been docked that says uh you know it's cooler than barney the dinosaur that guy rented a room in that house he was Derek's roommate <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> There's a bar we have for ridiculousness, and it just gets raised with every line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, it's it, it's it's just so strange. And then nothing against that guy Art Anthony, but that guy Art Anthony didn't win an Emmy. He was nominated for an Emmy, and he always puts on their Art Anthony Emmy Award winner. And he was nominated for an Emmy for prosthetic work on. Star Trek Deep Space Nine with Scott Bakula. I mean, that was in, that was 20 years ago, for gosh darn sakes. I mean, nothing against the show or his work, but it's like, you know, you were nominated for an Emmy, and it was for prosthetic work. I mean, nothing against that, but it's sure. like, it's just this, it's, it's this twisted fact that he, like, keeps slapping on the, on the DVDs. <sighs> but he didn't bring his Emmy, so that's why, Der- uh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, that's yeah. that's why that didn't happen. That's yeah. why it didn't happen. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. remember, you have to bring the Emmy. It's that's your credential. Yep, so. you gotta bring the Emmy. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> I wonder if that's the first question on like you know the list of is like so. First of all, do you have an Emmy? That's the that is the literal yeah. like that is the well, prerequisite for casting. Yeah, if you say yes, you're well, hired. <laughs> well, and I think that that was um, that was always some of those prerequisites. I think that, and I think this is true with a lot of people, you know, you, you want to work with people that have done more than you, but at the same time too, I think he would just surround himself just with, uh, just people like that, just so it would help give more legitimacy to stuff. And which of course, so many other filmmakers do that. That's, that is understandable at the same time too, though. You can't just, you know, because somebody else has a little bit of legitimacy that that just is not going to give, you know, the film the credibility that it needs. It needs to also have the story structure and just all of those other things in line, too, to make it a good film. Right. You can't just go off of someone's credibility from something else they did. Absolutely. Or if they're a Harry just Jack. slap it on there. Yeah, if they're a Harry Yeah, Jack, of course. There you go. That's the, that's that's the two re- that's the two prerequisites: Emmy Award and a Harrier Chet. You have to be yeah. one yeah. or own the other. Yeah, and if you got both, uh, you're hired like immediately, and you get credit on everything. You so, don't have to be yep. there, but you know. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now to kind of move on uh, towards like the end of all this mess, you you did an interview recently. Um, uh-huh. on a channel. Mm-hmm. Um, it got struck down by Eric Garbage on YouTube, who who is who is infamous also for throwing out um, false copyright claim allegations on a lot of content creators, and this is just one of the latest happenings in it. Uh, yeah. So this happens, and then a little bit later, the Crazy Dream video comes out, and you took it down also. And it's it's gone around, you know, that people think, you know, this was like a revenge tactic. We happen to know, 
and we've researched it very thoroughly. We happen to know that you have a legitimate legal claim behind this. Is that true? Absolutely, I do. And also, um, as was said in my statement, I absolutely do not condone any of these copyright claims unless people actually have a true, legitimate claim. Um, this has just been going on far too long of just this striking down for people for no apparent reason, just purely out of spite. I, as I said, I don't condone people just going after people like that in a vengeful way, just, just for any reason, just to be vengeful. <laughs> Absolutely. And it, that, that, that has happened now twice to the interviews. Uh, it's hurt my, uh, it's also been, attacking my friend Ryan on in his channel with that and I don't agree with it whatsoever. And and he is not the only person this has happened to. This has happened to several people. I mean this type mm -hmm. of these type of shenanigans, as everyone knows, has been going on since what? Uh maybe uh summer of two thousand fifteen, maybe late spring. I mean Absolutely you know, I mean four and a half years now practically. Yeah. And you know, we're not going to go into detail on, like, the, the the claim and, like, you know, the legitimate... It's legitimate. We won't go into the legalities of it, obviously. But just for transparency for everybody listening, like, it is it is 100% true. And, and Cody and I completely back you up 100%. Oh, this. no doubt. Like, from what we've seen, what we've researched into the whole entire picture, you know, we do agree that, you know, a lot of this is not for what he says it is. It's it, all based on the fact that he cannot handle criticism of his work, and therefore he has to find some way to take it down so that his image, quote, doesn't get har like harmed or hurt in any sort of way, and that's not how it works. And this is all done in fair use, parody, uh, transformative narrative, like everything that you can you know possibly call it is 100% okay to do. Right. Yeah. Well, and then what's and then what's also sad too is on a sidebar of that, the complete bait and switch that the fans have to go through. I mean, I mean, I feel for the fans. I mean, that is the one thing that um, that I know people realize. But especially with independent films, there is no studio, no producer. It's like pushing for, pushing for. I mean, this was all purely found. By fans. I mean, this goes all the way back to that original YMS video and being popular and just people starting to pay attention and buy these things. I mean, this is something that the fans made popular. And for them to just have that bait and switch done to them time and time after again, and then these same fans who just want to make an innocent review nothing more, just get their channel taken down. I mean, it's the equivalent of some director back in the heyday if Siskel and Ebert gave them a bad review of them, him trying to shut down the channel that Siskel and Ebert are on. That's yeah. literally what this is, except it's done nowadays time online versus on network television on some film review show because really those shows don't really exist anymore. Yeah, and, and the last time I remember, you know, we do have freedom of speech. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. And on top of yeah. that, even, you know, to make even more of a point, um, Eric Garbage is extremely selective about this because, you know, in attacking certain channels, there are still other channels out there that, you know, do the same thing, but he doesn't touch them, much like Felix's review. Um, well, and and, that, and that's the other thing. And so many people have brought up the fact of that because that man is the is one of the top YouTubers. Yeah. So to him, it was like, oh, well, why am I going to attack him? He's like one of the top YouTubers. I'll get him. I'll get him in my next film. So and that's and, and that's exactly what that was about. And everyone has pointed that out. And everyone is smart enough to understand that and point that out. Yep. And I think so. it's, I think it's more along the lines that he cannot take down someone as high end as he is, because, I mean, look at his following. Like he, he's been doing this so long that there are so many people that back him up. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. I feel like he takes it in his own account to take down people that he knows he can take down. Mm -hmm. Like they're oh, yeah. less of a threat, basically. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Yeah, it's I, I. I've just. I mean, I remember when all of that first started, and I. 
it, it, I, I, I couldn't fathom it. I, I, I literally just, it just didn't, I just couldn't put it together. I'm just like, what? Really? It's like, there's just no way. It's like, and, and it was really happening. And it's, it's just crazy. I mean, it was just, I, I just, I'd never heard of anybody doing anything like that whatsoever. Yeah, we're still just as thrown back about it as you are, too. Yeah. So. And I mean, and, and that's, and, and that's a tough thing, I will say, because I know that there were people that, you know, made fun of my performance, made fun of the voice and whatnot. And, you know, when I, fir- when I first, when everything first came out, it was kind of tough to read those things. But as I've gotten older and matured, I mean, I, you know, I've just realized, like, you know what, people are going to have their opinions. And one of the best things to do is just ignore it or to just make or just make light of it or heck even even comment to those people and say hey you know it's like hey thanks for watching anyway thanks for your suggestion you know next time i do this i'll do it differently i mean and i and i know that can be a difficult thing to do sometimes but i mean it's just it's just the way it is i mean i don't care if you're a filmmaker an actor a, a a musician i mean no matter what you do somebody's not gonna like it and mm-hmm. it sucks but it's just you just gotta live with it man. it's on any creative outlet so yeah yeah and any I mean, creative outlets and even to back your, you know? <clears throat> yeah and even to back you up further on what you just said i mean i know like you i know you heard some of the some of the material we've done before uh, especially regarding this and Heck, yeah. even, even in the show opening, Cody and I did the voice because we think it's hilarious. We we absolutely love it, and it's endearing, you know. And it's you know, yeah. you, you Jason actually get it. You, you get it, you mm-hmm. know. And we appreciate that so much about you. And you know, we can't thank you enough for being so down to earth about all of it. Honestly, right? No, I appreciate it, man. And it's yeah. I mean, it's. The, the, the world already has, you know, enough angry people sitting on their computer spouting out hate. I don't need to join. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Or, or, two doof, or two doofballs sitting behind a microphone talking about pop culture. I mean, you yeah. know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Well, well, you know, man, we, we uh, just kind of bring this out to a close. I mean, uh, it's a lot to unpack, dude. Um we know this was kind of a turbulent time in your life, you know, here and there. I mean, mostly turbulent, you know, we would assume. And, you know, you're closing the door on this chapter, as you said in your uh, your statement that you, you had read. Um, yeah. Are you finally, you know, like moving on from this, are, are you happy to like just kind of close the book, close the book on this chapter in your life or turn the page on this chapter in your life and move forward? Oh, I'm extremely happy about it. I mean, just the opportunity that's been presented about getting – the interviews, uh, the people that have contacted me, just all the support that my fiance has given me and just helping me move along to get this door closed. I'm very happy to get it closed. And I know it's probably a little disappointing for some people, but and just like anybody else in life, you just, you just have to just move on from situations. And me personally, I think it's just best for this just to kind of move on. I mean, if I, if I would have stuck around any longer, I mean, I think those things would have just gotten dragged even further down in the toilet. Yeah. So it was kind of good to get out while the getting was good. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do, don't blame me there. Now, yeah. amongst all of the experience that you've had from day one until now, are you planning on doing any form of voice acting in the future or currently or anything about that? Uh, I would like to get some stuff, uh, have my fiance, like help me, like, you know, set up, like, you know, do like some research and like put the voice out there on some apps. I'm on, I've been asked about Fiverr and do some stuff like that. Um, so I'd like to get that set up eventually. Um, as far as pursuing voice work, uh, on another avenue that's really just not something that's really on the horizon for me. Uh, I don't have uh, uh, an agent right now or anything, so all of that stuff, you know, you would really need an agent to get the better work. And right. I'm working too much full time now to really kind of pursue a whole lot of that, so it's still kind of it's kind of on the back burner, so to mm. speak. Yeah, it's sure. understandable. Um, yeah. So, 
do you have anything like on a final note? Uh, do you have anything that you want to tell your like your fans? You know, people that have followed oh, yeah. you and support you. Is there anything you want to let them know? Because I mean, you know, this, this being you know, like you said, this will be your last interview, and you know, before we get into that, like. Uh, it, it was an it's an honor like honestly it really is an honor to cody and i both to be able to speak to you and to give you this this space to let all this out yeah because i mean when he told me that this was going to happen like i literally just like grinned because it was just so refreshing to finally have that kind of opportunity with someone like you who's actually been through both the good and the bad of this whole situation so no, and I and I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to do that, and you guys have just been so nice and kind-hearted about it. We've been so much on the same page about all this, and it, it's it's been great. Mm. So it, it 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 feels good to me because one of the things for me that I was so worried about for so long, and I'm still worried about, is because garbage had pushed himself so severely on people with so much shameless promoting it really has left me extremely leery mm -hmm. about doing stuff about even putting myself out there with just anything else because i feel like and i might be paranoid when i say this but i feel like that i would have a microscope on me because i don't want any of my actions to mirror any of his actions whatsoever so i'm probably being almost too cautious about stuff but that that's that's just the way i feel about it so and there's nothing wrong with that it's understandable completely yeah. it's yeah. completely understandable <clears throat> yeah but yeah but, but no i would i would uh, if i got a chance me i would like to thank all of my fans for standing by me i mean i mean it is sad to go but i know that everybody out there will understand why i've decided to end it now um, I lead a very private life and I don't have social media at all. and my fiance and I do just want to move on with this and just not have any garbage in our life <laughs> time to take out um, the garbage right yep taking the yep, garbage out yep yep but I'm still going to be around and uh, like I said I'm going to be looking to do on some of the apps some get into some voiceover apps and whatnot, uh, doing the OG voice. And also, uh, with that, on an unrelated note, uh, there are still a couple of um, movies I've got that are on my IMDb still in post-production that'll be out, uh, hopefully. You know, people will want to go see them. Uh, there's a couple things that are on uh, Amazon Prime that people can watch me in, and... Uh, you know, go on my YouTube page, go on IMDb. There's stuff on there. So, yeah. We'll link your YouTube and your IMDb in the show notes below if anybody wants to check all that out. We'll, we'll hook them up with all the links for that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I would also, too, just like to give a special thanks to, to every single person who's just emailed me, left nice comments. I mean, it's, it's been just so amazing to get to talk to so many people. And, I mean, to be honest, it's like, that is the true reason to do any of this stuff is, is to be able to entertain people, whether you're playing music, doing a podcast, whether you're a comedian, an actor, whatever, you want to entertain people. Right. And then when you get to talk to those people and they tell you, hey, you were funny, you played this character, well, whatever, I mean, it's, it's beautiful and it's, it, it's great. So what, the little bit of fan base that I have gotten out of this has just been so incredible. And it's really been worth it, despite all the crazy malarkey that I've had to put up with. So, yeah. Yeah. it's been great. Man, we'd like to thank you again, just for putting a smile on our face. Like, and, and I feel like we speak for, you know, everybody that's listening and everybody that has commented and stuff. We, we all thank you, Jason, very much for giving us something, even like you said, if, even if it was cringy or even if it was crazy, like giving us something to smile, laugh at, and just have a good time with. You know, we, we all thoroughly appreciate it. Yeah, it didn't really feel like an interview. It felt more like just getting to know you as a person. So, I mean, like a person on a personal level. So it, it felt really rewarding on so many like, grounds. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate that. And, and that was the whole idea. It's all I've ever wanted to 
try to do was just come off of just like, hey, you know, I may have done some weird stuff, but I'm actually a pretty, a pretty okay guy if you just want to talk. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And it's very apparent. So man. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, that's the best I can say with that. And and I guess too, and it goes back to that before. It's it's just really, it, it's just left me just so kind of leery about stuff like that about just coming out and talking to people just because just of garbage is crazy shenanigans <laughs> and I like I said I don't want to be compared to any of that so well, that's we, my two cents yeah <laughs> well, we we certainly don't feel there's any comparison there like you exceed above that in so many ways yeah so. But uh, thank you, I appreciate it. Absolutely, and I, I and I appreciate you guys uh, for reaching out too, because I mean, and that was the other thing too was I never wanted to look like I was fishing to like, hey, you know, talk to me, talk to me, you know, kind of thing. So it's been it, it's been nice to have, you know, uh, people like yourselves just like come forward and just you know want to talk to me i mean it's 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 great i mean it's mm. beautiful it's like wow it's like people people are actually interested this is really cool it's oh, like yeah actually put this in people that's it's great very legitimate yeah absolutely yeah and yeah I'm, I'm you know i speak from cody and i both we both say like you know we're glad it worked out we're glad um we got reached out to and got put in touch with you and uh this has been fun man we really appreciate you taking time because we you know we know you work a lot we Really appreciate you coming on to the show and uh, hanging out with us and uh, talking to us and, you know, just having a good time, really, you know? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, and I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody for listening, and I'm glad that uh, hopefully this will close the book on all of this stuff. And hopefully a lot of these behind-the-scenes questions got answered or behind-the-scenes stories got confirmed. Because, I mean... I know for myself, I mean, my fiance has pointed this out, but I'm certainly one of those people that reads all the IMDb trivia. Like, I mean, like, I mean, like, I, you know, like, like Fight Club is one of my favorite movies. I, I, David Fincher is like my absolute favorite filmmaker. So I like read all of this stuff about him and just all this weird, useless trivia that only fans would care about. So for me, it's like I kind of like to think that, like, I kind of, opened up about some weird stories that only the fans would care about. Oh, you, uh, you did. And even even those that are listening for the first time for this or those that have been with Cody and I since we started this, like, you know, these are all these are all interesting stories. Mm-hmm. Like, they really are. You know, and that's the kind of stuff we strive for. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. And now... Well, and, well, and I, mm, sorry, well, and I was going to say, and that's the other thing, like, for you guys. I mean, I can't even imagine... What's got to be like for you guys on your end? I mean, you guys have constantly got to do research and, like, find interesting stories. Or then if you find a story that's not that interesting, okay, how can we make this interesting? How can we present this in a new light to make it interesting or to to where it fits into what we're talking about? So that's a whole whole other (laughs) headache for, you know, people like yourselves that I appreciate and admire. So... (laughs) Yeah, so well, thank you very much. Appreciate absolutely, it. man. But now we close the book on we micro close the tank book, top. Man. Thank you for putting up with me, <laughs> <laughs> dude. It was not even putting up. It was it was a it was a pleasure. Oh and, yeah, it was a joy. But yeah, let's let's go ahead right now and officially shut the door on. What'd you say? Black bro tank top. Black bro tank top. Ram bro. Let's take out the garbage. Let's uh, let's be done with it and. and Every, hopefully everybody had their questions answered and some facts were brought to light that people didn't know about and hopefully everybody can just move forward and I'm putting the book in the vault right now okay put it put it in the garbage vault we're done. <laughs> put it in the garbage absolutely <laughs> yes <laughs> all right Jason well we're gonna let you go man and uh, we know you you're a busy dude outside of this so uh, we again all right, thank man. you thank you so much thanks a lot guys keep in touch we'll holler thank at you, you later I will all right bye all right bye Yay! That was just a lot. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. Like, just you got a woo sob after that one. Yeah, a little bit. But I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm. I need like <clears throat> Lamaze breathing for that one. All <laughs> right, just breathe in, Cody. Just breathe in, breathe out. Breathe Don't in. mess with my discount. <laughs>
I, I'm just I'm glad that Jason is able to close this door on the cha- on this chapter of his life and hopefully move on with some peace of mind from everything. Having relief, you know, that tension off a little bit to finally be able to, you know, go forward without any kind of, you know, BS basically BS in the back of his mind or just having to deal with the pressures of everything involved here, basically. Yeah, exactly. So we hope you guys enjoyed that and be sure to, you know, support him and send him all your love and support. Always do that stuff. The guy is awesome. He is very awesome. Very, very cool dude. Mm -hmm. I emphasize the word cool. Very Uh, cool. Ah, there you go. (laughs) But yeah, um, we want to throw some thank yous out there because honestly, uh, since all this started back up, like this has happened so many times before and it, it, it continues to happen. But, you know, we just want, we want to say thank you to people that were involved in this most recent situation that none of this would have been kind of possible without, as far as this interview and especially like these same people, you should also go support and, you know, just it, help, you know, it, it's, it's not, as much as us thanking for the opportunity to do this, it's more along the lines of people being there for him while he was going through what he has dealt with, basically. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, I mean, even, and aside from that, just, uh, you know, helping us as well, like, through some of this, and, and just, you know, including us and in, in l- allowing us to be alongside you, you know, through all this stuff. Um, Absolutely, 100% thanking Jason and his fiance like that two awesome people mm-hmm. would love to thank Jason's media council as well for um kind of guiding us along as far as um getting this helping get this set up for reaching out to us for this um at bad cool cat on twitter for just being awesome and uh providing some some very very uh interesting details on some things mm-hmm. a lot of insight yeah go follow this Twitter page because it's it's just chock full of just great stuff. Um, Ryan Osiris, a big shout out to Ryan. Um, go support him and his endeavors on his channel. You can mm-hmm. uh, subscribe to him on YouTube. Uh, Adam at Your Movie Sucks, just because honestly, he's he's one of the biggest like um, people that help in all this stuff. You know when things like this happen, he's one of the good go-to people. So, yeah, because I mean, a lot of this is a community effort to try and you know keep everybody together. You know, on so many different levels. So, it's people like them that you know help keep everybody informed enough to you know battle things like this to not be succumb to these like torrential pressures that these situations arise with. Basically, absolutely. And thank everybody that's listening right now. Thank, thank you guys very, very much. We appreciate everything y'all do. Absolutely. Um, thanks for interacting with us on social media uh, leading up to this. And uh, we appreciate your comments and your words. And I'm sure the rest of the guys that we mentioned beforehand do as well. We've se- we see you out there. Mm, we acknowledge. Big time. Bam. But yeah, that was uh, that was Jason Johnson, everybody. Oh, I'm gonna just bump this microphone with all these uh, stacks of papers right Cause here. Because why not? Let me do it again. Hang on. All right, cool. Just just to... no. He was smacking a fly. It was yeah, just being... I, I, sorry. He was bugging him. A dirty dog, mother. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, if you would like to listen to more of us, you can go to supermediabrospodcast.com. All past, present, and future episodes are up there. Yes, sir. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and. We're gonna be cheesy and say what? What do we? What do we say about the little bell in the corner? What do we? What do we say about it? You punch it, punch it real hard, ring it, ding it, hit it, punch it, poke it, whatever you String do. String it, ching it, you know. Anything you can. Hang on, let me, sip it. Hang on, just sip it good. <sighs> yeah, punch that bell. <laughs> A punch that bell. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, if you also would like to uh, buy merchandise from us, go to our storefrontier.com page. It's in the show notes below. All this information is below in the show notes and in the description on YouTube. Y'all know the routine. Absolutely. 
And the current routine about to hit you. Oh, here we go. Social media. Facebook.com slash Supermedia Bros. Here it comes. Twitter.com slash Supermedia Bros underscore. I'm already out there. All right, cool. Instagram.com slash Supermedia Bros podcast. Wow, look at these stupid ass pictures. Come look at our stupid pictures. I am. Stop yelling at me. Nope. Until you can hear and get the big picture. On Instagram. I have it on my iPad. It's the biggest way, yeah, to see it. Plug it up to the 44-inch flat screen in the living room. I don't have one. What are you going to do? I'm going to look at my iPad. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, 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 yeah. We're, we're not sorry. This is, this is just our, our goofiness at play here. Just yeah. You can't see it, but Cody is shaking his head like very hard right now. Yeah, it's so hard. It's so hard it's gonna fall off his shoulders. Yeah. Shake it off. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry, I didn't mean to entertain that. Fact. No, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. It's, it's cool. It's just gonna go swiftly by. It, it, exactly. Exactly. You know what else is gonna go swiftly by? This 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 drum fill. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was Jason Johnson. The cat is out of the bag. Thank you very much for listening this week. Until next time, I've been Midnight Agent Raw. And I've been Okami. Shades on. And we're off. <laughs>